Well, actually, you know, so much about, about um, COVID and things obviously still in the headlines. Mm. And it's almost a year now since millions of elderly people in care homes have had any physical contact with their relatives or loved ones. Um, and West End star Ruthie Henshaw, um, there's a piece about her in the, in the Daily Mail today, and she's calling for a change in the law to make it illegal for care homes to ban indoor visits. Now, her uh, mum, Gloria, is 87 years old and she has dementia and Ruthie fears is that her mother, well, could just die of loneliness. And in fact, the Commons um, Committee on Human Rights want a set of legislation introduced, meaning a close relative could be treated as if they were a care home worker. And obviously, Judy, very close to my heart, this yeah, one, because I've... my mum, you know, has not been out of her yeah. care home since March. It, you know, it's just, it's just heartbreaking because we know, obviously, they want to protect, um, you know, elderly people and people in general, but the frustration of knowing that the government himself let out 20 to 25,000 elderly people back into care homes without being tested and now people are suffering. We're getting, it's up to a year, you're saying. Mm. We know what you're going through personally and you cannot have that contact. It's so important to have that contact with elderly people and it makes you think about their human rights. They've got rights to life, rights to loved ones and that connection and it's so being taken away from them. Hearing people worry that they're not going to see their parents again. It, 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 it's just overwhelming with I emotion. I think, you know, the, the, the biggest concern for a lot of people is um, if, they, if they died and you mm. haven't actually held them, touched them. You know, I've seen my mum through a window. I phone her all the time, but I haven't physically touched her. And that's always a big concern. Oh, that's me. Oh, <laughs> so kissing her through the window. Um, but I have to say, I mean, when you talk about human rights, I absolutely understand it from the care home side mm. point of view, because they have such a responsibility and then they're caring for very vulnerable elderly people. And in my mum's care home, they locked down before the official mm. lockdown. They saw it coming. They locked down and I mean, they have been incredible. But I just think now, Janet, people are asking the question, OK, we understood that then, but now with my mum's had her first vaccine, could they not treat me as a well, primary exactly. care worker mm -hmm. in, essentially, mm -hmm. test me, and yes. as long as I don't have COVID, she's had her vaccination, I could go in and physically sit in her room and talk to her. Yeah. Quite her. frankly, I can't see the problem that if you're vaccinated, and therefore, you're building up antibodies. How are you different to the carers hmm. who are looking after your mother in the care home? Because it has been uh, written in the papers that up to 20% of the people working in care homes are saying that they won't be vaccinated. But I find that absolutely incredible. Yeah. And the other thing is that care homes are... A lot of care homes are run as businesses mm. and they're worried about risk and about being sued, so they're anxious to protect their shareholders because they're private enterprises. But nevertheless, if you're vaccinated and you've got a relative in a care home, you ought to be able to see them full stop. Yeah. Otherwise, why are they I mean, being something, vaccinated? Something, Denise, that Ruthie said today really struck a chord with me. Mm. And she said, we are, we meaning the, the family and relatives, yeah. um, she said, we are the eyes, the ears, the voice and the memory of our loved ones. There she is with her lovely mum, Gloria. And that really touched me because you know, I, I can't praise the, the, um, the care workers in my mum's care home enough. They are incredible, but they're doing their daily jobs and they're very busy. Sometimes they're doing two <clears> jobs because <throat> they've yeah. had people off who've been unwell yeah. and some with well, COVID. Is... But they can't, they can't um, match my memories with my mum. They can't sit no, and talk to my mum about my dad or my sister or yeah. our life because they don't have time and they don't know her well enough, and that's what I think so many elderly people are missing. Well, this conversation, Ruth, is, is too late in coming. I mean, I remember talking to you about it. I was talking out about this in June and shouted down in some quarters about the fact that, of course, that of course the care homes have to work to keep COVID out of the homes, but it, it's at what price to these to these poor people who... who it, it's whether or not it's keeping people alive, but they're not living in any sort of exactly. way. But just like Janet said, I spoke to a, a very, very um, senior member of elderly care today, and she said that, of course, the, the, the government will not insure the care homes. They will only insure designated care homes. And those designated care homes are the ones that are taking people from the hospital, some who are not tested after they've recovered from COVID. They're not making sure they're negative. So from... 
from that point of view, the care homes that have zero COVID at the moment are absolutely terrified yeah. that there is going to be another outbreak. Mm. There's a place in the north that have 68 care homes. They've lost 400,000 residents oh. since January because COVID got into the homes. So it's it, and, and also, I think we see all these videos, don't we, on Twitter and social media about these awful care homes. But the majority, like you've just said, Ruth and Judy, yeah. the majority of people who work in these care homes are just saints. They are wonderful. Yeah. And they love and adore their residents. And I think, Judy, them. that's the thing, isn't it? You don't want to play a blame game. No. You know that. What we're saying is, right, let's, let's start thinking now, now of yeah. a way, sensibly mm -hmm. and as safely yeah. as possible, that we can connect people back. Yeah, it's hope. Have one... It's hope saying to my auntie Vi, for example, oh, you can phone her up. She's got Parkinson's and, disease. Yeah, she yeah, can't yeah. hold the phone. She's got a cataract in one eye so mm -hmm. she can hardly mm -hmm. see the television. Mm -hmm. Her quality of life must yeah. be absolutely appalling, no matter mm -hmm. how caring the people are looking after mm -hmm. her. The, the thing is the support, the stress as well on staff as well, but you've got to know elderly people, just as humans, we connect by having somebody else. You've, many people that I've worked with in the older care um, department, their partner dies, their husband dies, they've been with me for 25 years. Literally, two weeks later, a month later, they pass away as well. Well, I think so... that's, I think that's what, um, what oh. Ruthie's concerned about, saying she feels that she can see her mum deteriorating. I think that's what, yeah. you know, so many of you watching today, you'll be going through this, it's just you worry, you know, they're going to deteriorate because they haven't got that, that close Emotional, connection. Yeah. Uh, the Department of Health and Social Care have said close contact indoor visits are not currently allowed. While the vaccines provide protection from serious disease, we do not yet know if they prevent someone from passing on the virus to others. We will be looking to ensure that a wider range of visiting arrangements are made available when it is safe to do so. Well, we'll let's hope that that is soon, because I think people really, really need to yep. see their loved ones and to touch them and to hold them. Anyway... Um, right, something fluffy and nice and funny now, because we don't want to upset you today. Um, <laughs>